I want to thank you very much. I don't know why I'm here, other than Janet asked me to. And I owe a lot to Janet. So she asked, I come. But I really want to say, you know, only having three years of time with you, I don't have a whole deep knowledge. But I do, have, so I have a real lot of respect for what you have all accomplished and what an appreciation for the work you do. So I want you to make sure you understand, I'm just giving you my unique perspective of how I've engaged in my community to deepen our engagement. So Victor Kayam, several years ago, used to have a commercial all the time. I don't know if you remember the Remington Razors, some of you. And he said he, was so, he loved the company so much, the Razor so much, he bought the company. Well, I look at it and I say, I had so much passion for the Cincinnati Jewish community that, as my friends say, I went to the dark side and became a Jewish professional. <laughs> so I'm going to be up front. I'm Cincinnati born. I have deep, deep family involvement in our Jewish community. Not only have I been a past president of the Federation and the JCC, but so has many of my family members. My sister-in-law is currently president of the Federation. So it's a deep family commitment. So I have a unique perspective and a unique ideas of what Cincinnati community should look like. And that's where my passion lies. So that's my perspective. So use that as you understand how I'm going to talk to you and take that and figure out how you can take it back and make it work for you. So what I've wanted to start with is really three points. Deepening community engagement is not an option. Community <clears throat> building comes first. Okay, your J comes second. That may be hard for many of you to take, but community building comes first. Your profits, your budgets, your programs, they come second. Community building comes first. And if you do that, the rest of the community will start seeing that and will respect you more. Long-term view. Take that long-term view. Even if you're not going to be in that community forever, take a long-term view because that long-term view enables you be seen by the others is you're not just looking out for that short-term perspective of your J, but you're trying to build community. And then I finally say really three main points on top of that. Be genuine and be yourself. Be who you really are. Be purposeful and consistent. Be hungry and curious. Those are uh, traits that I'm suggesting you have because they will help you scan your environment. They'll help you be seen as somebody who is a leader in your community. Again, I'm, I know some of this is probably a little different than what you have done, but I really feel that this is what has helped me be successful so far. One of the ways I did that was I started changing the language that we, that we use in our community. Yesterday's design thinking was very much align, aligned with that. Reframe your perspective. How, do I, how did I use language to reframe perspective people had in the community? I have to give a lot of credit to David Ackerman, who during my Kivanim uh, session, whatever that was, three and a half, four years ago now, four years, uh, really said language is key to community. It really is. So when I came into this job, I recognized two main factors happening. Underlying in our community was role definition was just totally unclear. Nobody knew what each other was doing and why they were doing it. They were chasing dollars. They weren't communicating. They weren't collaborating entirely. That was just amongst agencies. Don't even talk about rabbis and congregations. Then you throw in the JCC, my JCC. What was happening there? No role definition. People weren't working together. They were siloed. They weren't cooperating. And I said, hold on. There's something on both sides. So I came up with this idea called lead, support, promote. What does that mean? I said, ask that question every time you enter into something. Are you leading it? Are you supporting it? Or are you promoting it? If you start asking that question, whether you're in a department, whether you're running a program, whether you're in an agency, <coughs> what is your role in helping this program, event, or organization? It really started to come clear when everybody started jumping on with it. I have no idea why. But they started taking it, and it was, they were repeating it across the community. And we saw people really starting to understand what their role was. They were here to support that program, or they were here to, to make sure people came to that program as promoting. 
or they were really the ones leading it. That role definition made things a lot clearer for everybody. And it started reframing the perspective and helped others see my role, the JCC's role better, and eventually led to the understanding they couldn't succeed without the other people helping them. It wasn't about just them. It allowed them to take the step back that we talked about yesterday, reframe their, their picture of it. And by reframing that, they were able to have a more chance for collaboration because they saw everybody had a chance to have an opportunity to be a part of it. It wasn't just about them. I would say there's a couple watch outs. One is, in this role definition, don't let somebody tell you what they, they expect of you in that role. You have to have an agreement. Expectations will kill the, the collaboration. If there's an expectation on you and you haven't agreed to it, you'll disappoint them or vice versa. <coughs> so what this has really done is enabled everybody to start living this idea that we all hear about, rising tides lift all boats. We started to work together. They found roles for each other, and now we are cooperating in a great deal more. Underlying all this, again, community first, step back, and how a community, in, for, in, in, excuse me, step back, what do you think about? What do the users, the people who we're trying to serve, the program again, or the apartment, or the event, who are we trying to reach? Is we trying to reach teens? What do they want? Not what institutions should be doing it. Okay, figure out what do they want first, and then let's figure out how the institutions overlay what they need. This is a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, give you a couple examples, uh, and then I'll tell you something we're doing now. So this language change, one of the first things I did was we developed a program called Under One Roof. Under One Roof was a Sukkot project where we built a community sukkah. It was an art fair, art project. That project, we had 45 uh, agencies and organizations, congregations, Jewish, non-Jewish, create an art panel that we hung in the sukkah. And the art panel was, it was, a, was the theme, the first one, was on what is your organization's interpretation of community. Every, there was one, one restriction, is you couldn't put the name of your organization on the panel. It just it had to be an art interpretation. So we had 45 agencies participate. And it really built, started building community, because it wasn't about what is your organization versus mine? It was about interpreting through art how you view and, and share community. We've now done that two more times. Is that right? Yes, we had three, three times total. And it's one of our highlight and featured programs every year. And we get on the news, we get schools to come, we get students to come and see it, have, learn about Sukkot, both Jewish and non-Jewish schools. Um, we have the Cincinnati Art Museum, a part of it, the symphony, so all kinds of organizations, and it talks about community. Uh, so last year, it was on food, sustainability of food, and what's your organization's interpretation of food. Uh, another program that's in process, uh, because of our leadership role in programming that the community now sees, because they, they determined we need to lead programming, is there's a teen initiative in cooperation with our Jewish Foundation and our Jewish and, and the Jim Joseph Foundation, that it's going to be focused on teens. That teen initiative, the community has agreed, not because I asked for it, not because the JCC asked for it, is that they wanted to house it at our JCC, where we will be then hiring teen leadership, teen programming, and then cooperating and building across the community, not for the JCC, but across the community, a response to engaging teens. And all the agencies, all the congregations want it at House of the J because we're, we're, the, we're the lead in the program. And that's done because they've gotten that understanding that. It doesn't always work. Don't get me wrong, this idea. I want to be clear. It's still this role definition, and that's why we talked about swimming upstream, this very challenging thing <clears throat> because our federation 
still hasn't understood. They keep thinking that we young professionals and anything Israel is their domain. But they say they don't do programming. So we still, have, we still haven't got everything ironed out. But it's still the basis of where we'll go have conversations around. Just fine, if you think you have a, need, a role in YPs, let's get agreement around what your role and our role is. It's actually on the docket to, have, the docket to discuss in the next month. Because we need clarity, because the staffs need clarity, the people we're serving need clarity, and it takes time. The most, one of the things I did want to share that I forgot is that um, just this morning, the chairman of our Jewish Foundation was speaking, going to be speaking to a local YMCA leadership and, and sent me a text and said, oh, by the way, I just want you to know I referenced your lead, support, promote concept to the YMCA leadership. So it has spread throughout. So what are we doing now besides trying to fit, keep going with the things we started? Our latest effort is really around something I call social networks. Many of you know, I've heard Brian Hayden's name. Well, for the last year, I've been working with Brian Hayden uh, and our JCC to do a strategic plan. While the final strategic plan, you know, the thing you put on the shelf and you write up and everybody says, oh, we did a strategic plan, isn't done. And it's going to be done soon. But We've already put in action. That's really what's important. We've already put in action where we're going. The biggest finding we found during this time is that we really are the connecting piece in the community. And we really got to figure out how we take this funnel in Cincinnati of 27,000 people who come through our door every, every month. Is how do we engage those people? So we feel like we're the connector. So we talked about what are, what are connectors? How do, and we really turn that into with a terminology, as I said, calling social networks. We're not talking Facebook, we're not talking Snapchat. We're talking about relationships. How do we help encourage relationships? And we're calling it social networks. So we're trying to build into our programming now and the conversations we're having with congregations and, and other agencies. Is how do the programs we're doing help foster social networking with young families? We talked about it a lot yesterday, the design thing. Is, you know, when we were taught, one of the areas was uh, children and family who were leaving our early childhood school. Well, why are, why are we waiting until they're leaving our early childhood school? What are we just doing when, we're, when, when they're in the early childhood school? To create social networks, because as so socially, we are all social animals. We move together. So we don't go choose the next day school or the next program on our own most of the time. We talk to our friends. What are they doing? Benchmarking talks about informal conversations. That's one of the key measures. I think it's really about how well we're we helping foster and helping people create relationships, yes, with us, but with each other, so that then they go engage more deeply in our community. So in the end, I say, that's my perspective. It's a unique perspective, I think. But I think there's some pieces of it I hope you can take back with you that may help you in helping further engage your community. Identify those people who can help you dig deeper in the community if you're not from there. Get more connected. Be seen as the person who has that community perspective, that brings the community perspective up first. Be persistent and really stick to it. As I said, deepening community engagement is not an option if you're going to be successful long term. If you don't do it consistently and persistently, your board, your donors, your staff will know it. So is that in the end, be genuine, be yourself. Be purposeful, consistent, hungry, and curious. Thank you.